Hello everyone, so today the composite pattern. So it's an interesting structural design pattern that you can use when you have to deal with data structure with a lot of hierarchical layer. So hierarchical layer as in you have um, in an army, you have a general giving orders to a bunch of, um, I don't know, corporals and then each corporal has uh, their own squads of soldiers and so on and so on. So this pattern allows you to propagate updates or just create this kind of tree or retrieving information for this kind of data structure. So in software engineering you will often see a tree structure manipulation and all the algorithms going with it. So uh, it's, a, it's a very unique design pattern, so it's quite interesting. This um, video is part of uh, the design pattern uh, series, of course, but also part of the mini series that uh, I kicked off last week about how to publish your own Golang library. So the code base implementation of today will be part of that library, so that was a good excuse for me to show you, to present you the, that design pattern. As usual, we will see uh, how to implement that, um, that pattern with an example, and um, towards the end, we will discuss um, pros and cons of that pattern. So um, if you enjoy the video, like and subscribe, so then I understand that you like this kind of content, and if you have any questions, comments, um, let me know in the YouTube comments as usual. Happy video! Okay, so a quick reminder, so that's our Timber repo that uh, I created last week to show you how to publish a Golang library, so uh, that package has just uh, one function called hello and it's a logging a sentence, so we will work from there. So um, a simple package, there's a go mod file, uh, there's a main file to try it out our timber package. So what we want to do today is a NASCII tree. So it looks like that. So you have like a, a folder which can contain other folders or just um, files. And the subfolders can also contain folders again or just files so um, now you understand why I called that package timber is just a pan with tree data structure so it would be a educational um, Golang library so nothing very very serious so you just you just send a go strike a tree struct and then that library will display that for you all right, so let's let's kick off. So let's create um, a package for uh, interfaces for that timber package. So we will call it. Um, we 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 need a node. So here I made a mistake. I created a simple simple application, but we can ch change that easily. We will call it timber interface. So. Um, Okay, so that's the implementation of that pattern. So we need a node. So a node will have a method. So we want, we just want to display uh, the name of a node. So, so for instance, display for the node um, robot. It will be just robots.txt. Then, so that's the um, the very bottom element. So the top element is a, a node tree. So a node tree can contain um, nodes. So components nodes. So for instance, a public folder has three items. And it has a name as well. So here is how you compose uh, interfaces. So our node tree will include the node interface. So what it means is that node tree has the method uh, display in its interface as well. 
So here you can see I changed really cheekily in line 9. So instead of having a slice of nodes, we will have a slice of itself. So it's a recursive declaration. So a node tree has a method called, called components and it's returning a slice of itself. Which makes sense because you can have um, folder containing folders containing folders and so on and so on. Okay, so very too simple interface, so very easy in Go. Um, I want to try that out, so let's create um, some implementation for it. So we have we can declare a leaf for a node, so the very primitive um, component. So here, if you're familiar with my videos, I just used the the ID shortcut to implement that interface so if our leaf has a field called label our display method will just return that label so we can simply try that out so if I create a leaf with a label with L0 and then I invoke display so and I assign that to a variable called D and we we, we will print D you can see L0. Yeah, so all good. So that's just the implementation of the nodes. Then we want an implementation of our node tree. So we will simply create a branch. So it's basically a tree. I mean, a real life tree, which has branches and leaves on the branches, or branches can have little branches again. Okay, so. Um, so you can see here it has two methods so you can see that our compos interface composition worked as intended so um yeah so you can see that node tree is also including node the node interface so same as a leaf so we can call it uh, we can um you can see i populated a label field and we will just return that for display Okay, so then for the components um, interface, we will just create another field called components, which is a slice of, um, we can try with branch and I'll show you why it doesn't work. So here it's simply returning, well, the, the, the components. So the branch components, and you can see that my ID is complaining because um, components is, is asking for that interface so then uh, we change that back, so that's not a big deal. Um, now, if we create a branch, so let's create another leaf, L1. Now branch zero. So auto completion from your ID, you can call it branch zero. And the component is just a slice of timber interface node not tree, sorry, and it's simply L0 and L1. So you can see that my ID is complaining, so what's going on? So your your leaves at the moment are not implementing um, the method components, which makes sense because it might be a branch or it might be a leaf. So a leaf uh, has to, in fact, implement not tree as well. But that's not big. That's not a big deal. It doesn't have any components, so we can just return nil. So now your leaf are complying to the node tree interface, and we can finally display our branch zero. So same as before that we did with the leaf zero. If I run that program, we should see branch zero no worries and then if we try the components it should spit back leaf zero and leaf one so all good and it works as intended so it's very straightforward so that's the essence of that design pattern so you can just uh, compose tree structure and relying on interface to compose them so your parents will have children 
and you can be sure that they're implementing the same interface so then um, you can manipulate them easily so you could extend that node interface for instance let's uh, put that in practice because it's a bit um, it's a bit theoretical right now I'm just um, the display function is just theoretical so let's print the whole tree for instance so here I'm back to my timber package not the timber interface and um, we will declare a print function so instead of just uh, printing a sentence now we want to print the whole tree so same as the example below so let's start naively as usual so if I send in a node tree well I can display its own label right so if we try that out um, so with our branch 0 for instance if we just try to print so it's from the timber package timber.print timber timber b0 so I should see branch 0 which is the label of branch 0 right so so far so good so now we want to carry on and display its um, uh, the components of branch 0 so no worries we can do that as well so we can just invoke a for loop three components because we know that it's a node tree and it it um, it has that methods dot components and then with uh, each child we can just invoke again dot display because they are complaining to that interface so this is where the design pattern the beauty of this the design pattern is here basically so i just change children for child and we could just uh, as i said invoke dot display right so if we do that we should see leaf zero and leaf one there you go brand zero leaf one and leaf two uh, leaf zero and leaf one awesome so let's complexify um, a little bit now so um, let's create um, let's say another branch so branch one branch so you know the drill now we we'll label it branch one and then um, we will create more components so it's a slice of timber interface node tree we can create a bunch of um, leaves right so here I can just create uh, straight away some leaves instead of declaring them like L0 and L1 so you can see now B0 has a branch has two leaves and one branch and that branch has one leaf so you can see we displayed branch one but we're not displaying leaf three because well I'm just displaying the children of B0 I'm not displaying the children of the children of B0 right so here well you could tell me well I can write another for loop from each uh, child of the children of B0 right but then I will have to do that until when because the tree might be really deep like I don't know 50 layers so I'm not gonna write 50 for loop so the secret here is to use uh, recursion so I'm creating do print so this is uh, usually the syntax the signal for you for a reader to say that there will be a recursion in place so here instead of invoking print I'm invoking do print and I'm re-invoking it in that for loop so it means that it will invoke do print for each child of the the children of the original tree so and then your initialization is line 9 you just invoke do print so you can see now branch 0 the three kids and then the grandkid of branch 0 which is the kid of branch 1 so awesome so very simple very simple um, recursion um you you can it's not really pretty because we don't they're all in the on the same line so that you don't really know which 
uh, children belong to which parents, right? So um, it's you can take it slow. So we just we will just modify the do print function, and we will just pass a prefix basically to each time it's looping and each time you're going through another depth of recursion we will just um, uh, extend that prefix so um, so so then you log the prefix obviously and then you modify the prefix when you're about to do another loop so another loop occur on like 16 you can see our recursion and then there you go it's already much better so you can see the three uh, children of branch zero and then you can see the l3 is like apart because it's a it's a it's a child of branch one so here i'm just gonna complexify a bit to make sure that it's working all right so i created branch two which has three leaves so b0 so you can see um here L0, L1, branch one, branch one. I didn't change the label, sorry. So you can see the three leaves. And that's the composite pattern. All right, so let's discuss this pattern a little bit. So starting with the pros. So you can see that this pattern allows you to uh, manipulate very easily a complex data structure. You have some very specific techniques to traverse a tree or to calculate the depth of a tree or to find as quick as possible an element in a tree so they, they can be intimidating but you can see that um, this algorithm gives you frame a framework to work with them second thing uh, it's quite easy to extend because obviously we are uh, using interfaces so as long as you comply to those interfaces you can have different type of leaf um, leaf sorry and um, it's easy to manipulate them or updating them or uh, building a strong robust uh, model basically um, the the bad thing now so um, recursion is not really easy so it's not usually uh, beginner friendly so you have to try that by yourself so you can you can you saw that my ID helped me a bit with that recursion um, uh, symbol but uh, take it slow, try it by yourself, maybe on a simple data structure. Um, maybe I will do a simple video to help you on that. Um, yeah, leave a comment if you want one of that. And then uh, lastly, um, that pattern is only tailored for a very specific unique data structure. As I said, the tree. So it's not applicable to any other data structure. So that's... Um, it, it's good to know for interview, but um, you won't see it much in your life of software engineer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something today. Um, if you did, like and subscribe. And if you didn't, just leave me a comment. That's fine. Um, for a reminder, that video is part of that mini series, building a, a, your own Go Lang library and publish it. So we will come back next week to uh, carry on on that project. So for now, happy coding everyone.